everybody, Suze here, back with another Keto Dinner Ideas video. Today is another requested video. It is all about super easy keto dairy-free recipes. All of these are easily adaptable and perfect for throwing together for a weeknight meal. If you're not already a member of the crew, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. I wanna catch the way. First up, we're making the super easy, low-carb, crock pot chicken cacciatore this is from joy filled eats her original recipe is linked down below as always so to start with in a large crock pot i'm going to be using chicken breast for mine but you can use chicken thighs if you like boneless chicken breast i have about two and a half pounds here in my crock pot adding in a 28 ounce can of whole peeled tomatoes make sure it's no sugar added and i just poured them in with the juice on top of that, I'm adding in one medium-sized red bell pepper that I just cut into little slices, along with some onion. Now, she uses two onions for her recipe. I wanted to make it lower carb, so I'm just using half a cup of sliced regular white onion. On top of that, I'm adding in two teaspoons of minced garlic, a teaspoon of dried oregano, two teaspoons of dried parsley, a teaspoon of dried basil, and then a teaspoon of sea salt. And then you can cook this low and slow all day long if you want. I'm putting my lid on and I cooked mine on high for five hours. Stir it periodically, breaking up your chicken. And I kind of took the spoon and mashed my tomatoes down. This is what it looks like after you do that. To serve it, I steamed some zoodles in the microwave, spooned this over it. Because I had fresh basil in the fridge, I went ahead and put some on there. You can throw on some dairy-free Parmesan cheese or even some nutritional yeast on top of it if you like, as you see here on mine, but that's totally uh, up to you. This is very, very easy to throw together and a very nice tasting, family-friendly keto dairy-free recipe. Next up, super duper quick and easy, other than just slicing your pork, we have a keto sesame pork and green beans. The original recipe is by the best keto recipes. I don't know if they just aggregate others' recipes, but to start with, we're making our sauce, which so have a fourth a cup soy, you could use liquid aminos. Adding to that, one tablespoon brown swerve, one tablespoon rice vinegar, make sure you just get one that's just straight vinegar, no carbs. Three tablespoons of sesame oil. Putting in two teaspoons of grated ginger, along with two teaspoons of minced garlic. And then they use sriracha, but that has sugar in it, so I prefer this chili garlic sauce, and I like some spice. So I'm adding a teaspoon of that. You wanna leave this out if you don't want it spicy, but I don't think it'll taste as good without it, honestly. Whisking that together until it is nice and combined and that brown swerve is broken up. And then I'm just gonna stick this to the side while we get started on sauteing our pork. So for that in a large skillet, I added a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil over medium high heat. You can see here I have some pork. This is about a pound and a half. I took center cut pork chops, sliced them really thinly, and I am just plopping them in the skillet, evening them out into one layer. And I'm gonna let these cook undisturbed for about five minutes. Because I sliced the pork so thinly, this is gonna cook up in no time. After about five minutes, I'm just going to toss this around, get it over onto the uncooked side, and stirring it a little, I'm gonna continue cooking this for another five minutes, and that gets it nice and cooked through. And once all of the pink is gone, we're going to take our sauce, give it another little whisk here, and pouring it in. This is more of a kind of a lighter coating than sesame sauces I've made in the past. I prefer the saucy kind of stuff, but this was good for just a light dinner. Now I'm adding some green beans. They use three cups of fresh uh, whole green beans. I'm using two and a half cups of like flash frozen whole green beans. Some of these are broken apart. And I just sat them on the counter for a little while to kind of go ahead and thaw a bit and stirring from the bottom to make sure everything is nice and incorporated and coated with that flavoring. Now, I did turn my heat down to medium at this point, and I'm gonna just pop a lid on this, and I let it cook for about 10 minutes, making sure that everything was nice and coated in our kind of, I hate calling it a sauce because it's so thin. <laughs> You could leave the lid off and just keep cooking and stirring this and it would reduce this to more of a sauce. Taking the lid off after about 10 minutes, you can see here everything is nice and coated. And like I said, this was a nice change up 
than doing like a sticky sesame sauce. This is more of just like if you marinated your meat and veggies and then cooked it. Very light tasting, but still very, very flavorful. I did forget to add uh, a little additional salt and pepper to this dish, which I normally do. And because we use soy sauce, that does have a lot of uh, salt in it already. So it was fine, but normally I would add a little bit more. Here it is plated up. I did top it with some sesame seeds. This was probably my favorite of the week because I just love the flavor of that chili garlic sauce and sesame oil. Very easy dairy-free keto recipe that you can whip up. You can make it as spicy or as mild as you like. Next up, look at this beautiful meal. Oh my gosh, this is low carb bacon and pork rind crusted cod. So to start with, I just took an eight by eight glass dish, sprayed it with some extra virgin olive oil. I have in this shallow bowl, one egg beaten. And then I have two uh, wild caught Atlantic cod fillets. And these are about seven ounces each. And I'm doing it a little bit different from the recipe from That's Low Carb that's linked down below. I am coating both of my cod fillets in our egg and just putting them straight into the baking pan. I'm just sprinkling each of these with probably about an eighth to a fourth of a teaspoon of garlic powder on each cod fillet. And then I'm putting a couple tablespoons of crushed pork rinds on top of each one and using my hand to just press that into the top of the fish. I know some of you can't get your hands on crushed pork rinds. I always just make a whole bunch at one time in the food processor and store them for recipes like this. You could totally leave those off. I'm sure that this would taste fine without it and you could just proceed with the bacon. So for this bacon, I just fried up some bacon. This is two pieces crumbled and we're putting the equivalent of one on top of each each piece of fish and I'm also pressing that in and you could add additional salt if you wanted but there's a great amount of salt in the crushed pork rind so I didn't add any and I didn't add pepper on this now I like my fish well done so I'm popping it into the oven at 350 for 20 minutes most people would probably cook theirs around 15 minutes at 350 here's what it looks like when it comes out isn't it so pretty and while that was cooking we just uh, sliced up a little bit of veggie so steamed broccoli in the microwave to serve it I topped it with just a tiny bit of vine ripened tomato fresh basil and a nice amount of uh, cold pressed extra virgin olive oil over all of it. My husband, this was actually his favorite meal of the week and I'm very surprised by that. If I liked cod better, it might've been up there for me, but I'm really not that big of a fan of cod. Um, while I was eating it, I was thinking that this would be a great recipe with a little bit different kind of texture of fish, like a mahi, but a great new way to throw together fish instead of just your regular baked or broiled basic fish recipe. The last recipe of the week was another keto dairy-free crock pot meal. Look at this. I loved this. This was, you know, probably my second favorite of the week. It's called London Broil is Falling Down, original recipe by Ruled M.E. Link down below. Looks very messy, but in a crock pot, I have a two pound London Broil. You can see here I've already added my soy sauce to it. I added two tablespoons of soy, one on each side. And now I'm adding about, I didn't measure, about two tablespoons of unsweetened Primal Kitchen ketchup, about one total tablespoon of Dijon mustard, and Dijon mustard is dairy-free, most all of them that I've seen. And then I'm just using a silicone basting brush to kind of mix that together. Adding two teaspoons of minced garlic on top of that, and also using the basting brush to mix that in. And then I'm just coating it. You can see I'm sweeping off the excess on the other side. I'm gonna pick my London broil up, kinda smush that around on the bottom of my crock pot, put it back down. This looks messy, but it, it all came together super easy. And then I am just sprinkling this with two teaspoons of onion powder, just on top because this is all gonna cook down together. I think this is the first time I've ever made a linen broil in the crock pot. Interesting ingredient, we're adding a half a cup of just regular brewed coffee. And I'm adding a half a cup of chicken broth right on top of that. And then I'm adding a fourth of a cup of just regular cooking white wine. If you don't have that, you could totally leave it out. It'll still taste awesome. Putting the lid on, I cooked mine on high for about five and a half hours. You could cook it low and slow all day. It would be even better. Taking the lid off, this is what it looks like. I didn't stir it or break it apart at all while it's cooking. If you've watched me for a while, you know I always use an electric mixer to shred any meat, but I went ahead and used two forks for this, and I'm doing it on camera just to show you how tender it all came out. And how awesome, you know, messy going in, but we're just keeping it real around here. Sorry for the presentation on that. Shredding it apart, look how easy. 
so tender. And if you cook London broil a lot, you know that's a pretty tough cut of meat. And even cooking this on high for five and a half hours in the crock pot, nice and tender. Tossing it around in our sauce. In the meanwhile, I steamed some cauliflower rice in the microwave. And here it is plated up. I just served some of that beef right over the top of that cauliflower rice. This is perfect for doing a meal prep. Easy, dairy-free keto recipe that you can just, you see how messy and quickly we threw that together. I mean, and, and you don't have to use London broil for this. You could really use any type, you could use a chuck roast, um, whatever type of tougher cut beef that you find on sale that you wanna use. There you go, that's this week's keto dinner ideas video, all about those keto, low carb, dairy free recipes. I know I have a lot of people out here that love incorporating dairy free recipes into their ketogenic diet, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Happy Mother's Day to all of you moms that are celebrating in the States. And until next time, bye y'all.